We are back at Chicago Auto Pros, this time for something exciting. What do you got? We're washing cars. Oh, that should be simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually there's a lot that goes into uh, washing the nuts and bolts of it. You'd be surprised. So Jason is going to walk us through the finer details of how to wash a car properly yeah. and all the nuances and all the damage you can actually do by not taking into account certain things like dirty, sponges, water, debris. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it when you're washing a car. So we're gonna show you the tips, the tricks, the techniques, all the tools and the different chemicals we use to do a proper hand wash. The first thing that I want to teach you, Mark, is about scratches and micro swirling, because contrary to what most people think, they don't come out of thin air. There's a lot of things that can contribute to micro scratches, swirling, and basically your paint's really delicate. Anything that touches that surface could cause damage to it, including dry wiping the car with a microfiber, um, hand washing, wiping in the snow off with a brush or bad buffing techniques, bad machine buffing techniques. So all this can contribute to swirls and damages, especially car washes. Car washes are probably the number one contributor to micro swirling and these small finer scratches that you're gonna see under paint. Okay, so when you say car washes, can you define what that means? Because I think most people are like, well, a car wash is going through the meat grinder with the brushes or yeah. touchless. So there's a lot of types of car washes. You got touchless, you got tunnel washes, you got hand washes, you even got waterless washes. And each wash has a purpose. You know that most people can't see swirls or don't even care about swirls, so that's why we have a lot of people going to these tunnel washes. Um, and then, but if you care about your paint, you want it to look good, you want it to look new, um, hand washing is the way to go. Also, I mean, hand washing, the proper hand washing, because I've seen a lot of hand washes, too, that can do a lot of damage, more damage than an actual tunnel wash if you're not using the proper tools and techniques. In your experience, what's the most common type of car wash that people do? I mean, the average, a lot of people are gonna bring it to a tunnel car wash. Okay. You know, that's and is what, that the most damaging car wash as well, or can it be? It can be. Um, I mean, imagine 300 cars going through a tunnel and they're using the same fabric there. Uh, they've been advanced. There's different types of tunnel car washes. They have soft cloth washes, and then they have like these bristle brush washes that you really see anymore. Um, so they have advanced in the you know past couple decades, and they're safer than they used to be. But I mean, if you're going for the microscopic level, if you've got a nice car and you want to keep it looking as clean and scratch free as possible, I'd avoid those tunnel washes and I'd stick to proper hand washing. What is all this stuff? Are you going to talk about every single bottle you have on this table? <laughs> we won't talk about every single bottle, but this is a lot of the stuff that you need to properly wash your car. Okay. So we're going to go over it individually. I mean, like I have a whole soap section here. All right. Learning about soaps. Um, soap is a lubrication when you go to wash your car that'll encapsulate any dirt or particles that are on your car so you don't scratch or create swirl marks. And there's different types of soap. You don't want to use like a Dawn dish soap that has a degreaser in it. It's going to strip off any wax or protection that you have on the car and then it'll dry out any trim or rubber moldings that you have on the car. So there are, there are a lot of different soaps on the market and some of them are, you know, what I look for in a soap is I, I like a thick concentrated soap. And most of the car washes uh, soaps are going to be pH balanced. I mean, if they're dedicated for car washing, so you won't have to worry about that. Some of them have wax in it, so you'll see a wash and wax type of soap if you want to have a layer of protection that adds into that. And the pH balance is important because you have acidic and you have alkaline or so. Right. The acidic is bad for the paint, clearly. Yeah, it'll strip off any type of protection that you have on there. So if you just wax your car and use a bad soap, yeah, you don't have any type of protection on there. Gotcha. And you can get as crazy as you want. I mean, you can get uh, pH testers and you can test each soap, but generally most of the car wash soaps are going to be pH balanced. Okay. Moving on to the type of media that you want to use when you're washing your car, which is important. Um, I've seen a lot of people wash their cars with big 
yellow sponges and you know it's it's not the proper way to do it. I mean, the car washing industry has advanced a lot in the last couple decades. And uh, these are the mitts that we like to use. These are microfiber, I call them the dreadlock mitts. This is an auto fiber zero cuff mitt here. Uh, other great mitts from Red Company here. This is another type of just soft microfiber type of mitt. You know, when we're talking car wash, you can get as crazy as you want. You can really get in depth with it. Um, the mitts, what's the, the purpose is it is it because it absorbs a lot or is it because it helps to encapsulate the dirt and take it off or yeah so you see all these fibers and everything um, if you have something that's flat and doesn't have any porous type of things to it yeah that all the dirt and the salt and everything you're gonna be just grinding it into the paint basically and this holds all that dirt and all the particles inside the mix so that kind of so reduces the, the sandpaper car. effect of exactly. scraping scratching the paint okay exactly uh, moving on, you know, uh, you don't want any sand or anything debris in the type of mitt, so you can actually put one of these. This is a dirt lock bucket insert that you can put in the bottom of your bucket, and that kind of traps all the, the debris and the sand and dirt below this, so when you put your mitt back in the bucket, you're not dragging that back onto the car. Gotcha. Coming to wheel cleaning, um, there's a lot of different types of wheel cleaners. You have alkaline, you have acid wheel cleaners. I try to stay away from the acid cleaners just so I'm not breathing them or getting them on my skin, uh, damage anything. So a lot of the wheel cleaners that are out there are non-acid wheel cleaners and there's a lot of good wheel cleaners out there. When it comes to wheel cleaning, if you're taking care of your car and you're, you're maintaining it and you're washing it every week or every two weeks, you shouldn't, you have to use a heavy degreaser or cleaner for the wheels. I mean, you could even use a car wash soap if you really take care of it and maintain it. If you get into something to where you haven't washed it in a while and you have built up brake dust, you can use some heavier wheel cleaners here. I have some iron removers. So if you ever see uh, iron particles or the, the yellow, you kind of see that yellow on your wheels and everything, that's built on brake dust that's actually starting to rust and the iron removers will remove those. Are there certain cars that have more of that problem? Is it? So others? yeah, if you're looking at a white car, if you're looking at something with silver wheels, that's where you can really see that iron, but you're gonna see it all. If you come down to, if you have some black, glossy rims you're not going to see it as much but so. there's other things with glossy rims you have to be careful with obviously yeah. yes that's when we come into wheel brushes so uh, the wheels can scratch just like your paint does it's still just a base coat clear coat so um, I wouldn't use anything with bristles on a high gloss wheel I would use more something like this this is a wheel woolly it has a microfiber head and it's really soft and then I, sometimes I'll use a wash mitt on the exterior of the wheels too. So you can have a dedicated wash mitt for the body and one for the wheels. Gotcha. Okay. Coming to actually when you're done washing the car, you're going to rinse it and it comes to drying the car. So this can be the biggest contributing factor to installing swirls and scratches into your car if you're not drying it properly because once you start drying it, you don't have any lubrication where you, when you're washing the car, you have lubrication, you got soap. So picking on the right towel is important. You don't want to use your bath towel from at home, the terry cloth towels. You want to use something with microfiber. That's a microfiber weave that you have there, uh, very absorbent. Those are the ones we use here. And then when you're actually drying the car too, we take it an extra step. We use a quick detailer or a spray wax or something that's gonna lubricate that towel when we're wiping down the car. So these products here will add lubrication and it's also gonna add another layer of protection. Okay. So and it sounds like to me, everything is about keeping the paint surface clean as possible and yep. lubricated when you're rubbing it with anything. Yep. Yeah, and these are a lot of the great tools and, but another thing is you wanna have good techniques. So we're gonna show you how to do all those techniques next when we actually do the washing process. What are these, massagers? <laughs> <laughs> these are pressure washers, Mark. Really? They're small. Yeah, yeah. Great little pressure washers. So we use these out in the wash bay. Uh, pressure washing versus hose washing, you can definitely use the hose to wash your car. Uh, a pressure washer is going to do it faster, quicker, and more efficient. Okay. Is this, this isn't requirement for no, doing a good wash. No, not though, at right? all. Not at all. But these are relatively cheap. You can get these for less than $1,000. You're washing like a professional. 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 Kind of hits close to home for me. <laughs> but what, I'm standing by water pipes, yep. water tank, hoses, buckets. Yeah. So what are we doing here? We're about to fill the buckets up and uh, the water that you use to wash the car is very important because if you use hard water, you can end up with hard water spots, which you don't want on your car. 
So if you're washing outside in the sun and you do have hard water and it dries on your car, that water evaporates and there's a lot of minerals and impurities in hard water and it dries on your car and it leaves a water spot. If it bakes in the sun, it's actually gonna etch into the clear coat and then you have to use a machine to remove those hard water spots, so. That's one of the reasons why it said don't wash your car in the bright, hot sunlight. Exactly, well. okay. it'll dry real fast and evaporate. So if you do have hard water, and you can check this, you can have a little strip and check if you have hard water or not. Uh, number one is you can get a water softener. I did this when I had a mobile business. I put a water softener in my garage. Uh, two, you can get uh, tanks that you can rent. So you can have rever reverse osmosis water, and then you can have deionized water, and you can rent tank tanks and they can put them in your garage. Uh, number three is you can use a system like this. This is a portable, spotless water system that you can hook up to the water and it runs through and it filters all those impurities and all the minerals out in the water so you have nice clean water for your car wash. That's great. And um, obviously the benefit of this is you can just put this in your garage. Yeah. Or you can do a whole home, home system which has plenty of good things about soft water is... Yep. And there's different types of systems that you can connect to the wall. This one's portable, so you can bring it out. And this isn't expensive, I'm assuming. I mean, there's some expense to it, but not crazy. They're probably four or five hundred bucks. Okay, somewhere right. in there. <laughs> These out of my way. So you're, we're talking buckets. Yeah. Or what? Actually, you wanted to tell me something about washing a car. Yeah, these are two high-quality buckets that we have right here. How much are they? Five, six bucks. Oh, <laughs> that's my kind of bucket. Yeah, my These kind of price. Regular five gallon buckets. So what we're gonna be doing is the two bucket wash. And what I want everybody to know, your viewers, there's more than one way to wash a car. This is the two bucket method. You fill one with just regular water and one with soapy water. And the whole point of this is to, when you're washing your panel and you have a dirty mitt, you're gonna wring it out and rinse it in the just the water one. And then we're gonna put it in the soap one so we can have the cleanest mitt possible when we bring it back to the car and wash it. There's another method out there. I mean, you can have one bucket, you can put 10 mitts in it if you want to and just use one mitt per section. And then you can wash a bunch of mitts later if you want to, so. So you want a clean mitt and a dirty mitt, basically. Yeah. The, the most basic. Yeah, you wanna get all the grime that you just took off the car out of the mitt so you don't drag it and transfer it onto other panels. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we, what's next? Well, we're gonna start washing the car, but I wanna, go over, we talked about how delicate the paint is. So you have all, when you're driving, you got all kinds of things that can get stuck to the paint surface. You got dirt, sand, salt, bird droppings, bugs, all this stuff when you're washing the car can be grinded into the paint and that's where scratches and swirls come from. So washing your car is important, but the way you wash it is even more important because you got to remember all this stuff, all this debris, it could just be causing damage if you're not doing the proper techniques. Gotcha. So it's not so much it getting on there. Well, obviously you don't want debris on there, but it's it's removing it. That is the delicate process. How to re safely remove that without grinding it into your paint. Okay. So I guess for from my perspective, and normal per people's perspective, how why do do these things cause scratches? What are you really scratching on the car? So with a paint system, I mean you have your primer, you have your base coat, and then you have your clear coat. And clear coats are hard and they're durable, but it's what takes all the weathering. And different paint systems, different manufacturers all have different types of paint. So you have soft paint and you have hard paint. Soft paint scratches really easy. I mean, some of that paint you can just scratch with a microfiber towel, even if it's perfectly clean. That's how easily and delicate it is. Okay, so that's why you're that's why you have to take so much care in the washing procedure of your car. Yes. Because that basically anything that's on this paint surface could be potentially scratching the clear, the top coat. There you go, All yes. Right. Time to get down and dirty. First step of the car wash is to rinse it. We wanna get all the standing debris off the vehicle. You don't have to use a pressure washer. You can use just a regular hose, but a pressure washer is just gonna be that much faster, quicker, and more efficient. All right, now that we got most of the debris and all the mud chunks off, we can go to step number two, which is a foam cannon. This is an optional step, but with this car being so dirty, we're gonna spray this foam all over the car and it'll help break up all that dirt and dust and everything that's been sitting on this car. This foam is a little different than your car wash soap that you're using. This is almost considered an all-purpose cleaner. It's really meant for a pre-wash type of foam to really break down that dirt, grime, bugs, anything that may be on the vehicle before you actually wash it. 
we're going to let, let it sit for three, four, five minutes, and then we're going to rinse it off. And there's not a particular way you want to get this. You just want to get the entire car covered with the foam. Usually this is common sense, but you should rinse it from the top down, let the water flow down the vehicle. Also one of the things that you'll probably notice is that this car is a lot more hydrophobic than the LC we did. This one actually has a ceramic coating on it. All right, onto the wheels, which is one of the most difficult areas to clean when you're doing your hand wash. Um, Behind the caliper, you can see here, it's hard to get to, and you got all these spokes and everything. I mean, if you really wanted to get super crazy about it, you could pull this wheel off and clean it and be much easier. We're doing it with the wheel on. And uh, we're gonna start by cleaning the barrel of the rim. And there's lots of different tools. One of the most popular tools is this wheel face brush. And this is uh, pretty aggressive, being the, these are a shiny black, gloss black. I don't wanna use this aggressive bristle on it. So I'm gonna use, uh, this tool, which is a wheel woolly, to get back into the barrels of the rim. And then I'm gonna use a wash mitt to get the face of the wheels. I'm gonna start by spraying our wheel cleaner here, AM Wheels. This is a non-acidic cleaner. I wanna spray inside the wheel wells. Usually from top to bottom is best. Let everything flow down. Let gravity work for you. We'll spray this, and it's always best when you're using any type of chemical, let it dwell for a couple minutes. That's what the chemical's for, is to break down all that dirt, grease, grime, all that brake dust particles, everything built up. You can spray the tire, and then spray the wheel well, too. In my wheel bucket here, I actually filled it up with water and soap and everything so I can rinse my tools off after I clean a section of the wheel. Again, we're gonna start from the top. Get our wheel woolly in there. And this takes a little time. You gotta kinda work this back and forth. I wanna get back behind the spokes. So I work my wheel woolly in there behind it. I generally work on one wheel at a time. I don't want any of these chemicals to dry just like you were washing the paint. Find a cool, dry area that you can work in. All right, onto the washing process of the body. Got two new mitts, we got new water in our buckets. And we're gonna start washing from top to bottom. Most of the debris on your vehicle is gonna be on those bottom areas, so we're always gonna leave those to last. We'll start with the hood and the top here. When I'm washing the vehicle, I never wanna scrub anything. I'm just gonna use the weight of the mitt here, and I just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it from falling on the ground with my hand. I'll usually wash just one panel, depending on how, how dirty the car is. So I'll wash the half of the hood here in the windshield, and I'm actually gonna flip the mitt over. I'm gonna wash uh, another two halves of these panels. I'll wash the roof and then the back glass. After you wash a section, you want to rinse the mitt off. Any sand, dirt, and debris in this mitt could potentially damage the finish. We're gonna dip it in our water bucket here. We have a grit guard at the bottom. We can rub it against that to really loosen up all that soil on there. Wring it out, back into the soap, and repeat the process. One thing you wanna refrain from is scrubbing everything. If you have bugs, if you have sap, if you have tar, if there's something stuck to your car, scrubbing it off is not the proper way to do it. A lot of those items be, can be taken off by other products or other chemicals or other techniques and you can safely remove those products. Scrubbing them is just going to cause scratches. I want to wash right down to this line here. And I'll leave that bottom very last. All right, this next step uh, might have your neighbors looking at you funny when you walk out of your garage with a leaf blower to dry off your car, but it works really well to get all the cracks and crevices, all the water that's staining in the mirror. It works really well to get all that off the car. All 
All right, last step after washing, we're gonna dry the vehicle and we got two high quality microfibers that we're gonna use for this. And I have two different towels. I use one for my main towel to soak up most of the water and then a second one to dry up anything else that may be left behind. We're actually gonna use a maintenance spray. This is like a spray wax or a quick detailer. It's gonna add lubrication to the towel and it's also gonna add a layer of protection. This one's coated in Modesta, so we're gonna use Modesta's M2 Blast. There's not really a right and wrong way to dry a car. There's a more efficient way. You know, you've seen people do it in circles. It's not really efficient with your hands going all crazy. Eight, you're probably gonna miss some spots. So I like to use like the box technique where I'll just start in one area and I'll use overlapping passes and I'll box it out. After you're done washing your vehicle, don't get too discouraged if you still have contaminants that are sitting on top of the paint. You can have bug remains, tar residue, and sap still sitting on that surface. The most important thing is that you wanna remember is you don't wanna scrub any of this off. There's safe ways to remove this stuff, including all this rubber residue that Jack has on his car from the track. We're gonna use W7 tar remover. All right, the last step in the car wash process is to apply tire shine. And some people like it, some people don't. It's a matter of personal preference. I happen to like tire shine. I think it gives a look, good look on the vehicle. We're gonna use a water-based tire shine. There are solvent-based tire shines on the market. I personally like the water-based because I, I don't think it slings as much as the solvent where it can be a little greasy. And this is pretty simple to put this on. We're gonna spray it onto our applicator pad. This is an applicator pad that I bought from Home Depot. It's actually um, to paint walls with, but it works well as a tire shine applicator. I start at the bottom and work my way around the tire and just do one nice even layer. We're gonna let this sit on the tire for probably five to 10 minutes. And afterwards, we're gonna come with another microfiber and wipe off all the excess here so it doesn't sling on the side of the car. Jason just finished washing two lovely vehicles, one of which was provided by Lexus North America. So thanks to Matt Ruska and Kurt McAllister for that. What we tried to do here is demystify the washing process. There's not one way to wash a car, but hopefully this gives you the tips, tricks, and some of the tools you can use to get the job done right without tearing up your paint. So what's the better, which car do you prefer? What looks better after a clean washing? I'll take the vet. <laughs> <laughs>